So yeah, it was actually more intuitive than I expected to begin engaging with my followers. When I had hit about 20,000, I decided that I needed to start a blog. And so I started a blog and pretty quickly from there, I started getting followers, subscribers. Um, that was really cool. People came to me to learn about how to succeed on Instagram, to read book reviews, to sort of, you know, just talk about bookish things, publishing, author, art, that kind of stuff. And it shortly after starting the blog occurred to me that I could, you know, start leveraging this audience to make sales. And so I started just creating downloadable products. Um, I have several up on my blog right now. One is called how to create an Instagram system. That's all about how to just systematize Instagram. So instead of being this, you know, big, scary, threatening social media chore that you have to do, it's just easy and stream, you know, streamlined like what I do every single day. It doesn't feel like extra work. Um, I have a short little one called how to, you know, uh, create a shelfie, which the hashtag shelfie is a big deal in the bookstagram community. It's just a picture of your bookshelves. Um, and a lot of people ask me, how do you arrange your bookshelves? And so I was like, oh, you know, I can make money from this. And so I just have a really cheap download that um, I have actually been able to sell quite a number of. Um, so basically, it was very intuitive for me to start making money from my audience just by answering questions that they wanted answered with expertise that I had built over the last year. And it wasn't hard. Um, another of the downloads that I have up there is how to start a writing business. And since I've had a successful one for four to five years, again, that wasn't hard either. So you just need to avoid the curse of the guru and assume that everything you know is obvious because it is not. You have real, actual experience and expertise that people really want to know about. And then you just need to find the questions that people want answers to and don't have and answer them. And it's really pretty simple. All right. Uh, I love that, uh, that you brought up those few different things because it is simple. It's about just spending time on the platform and, and engaging and obviously finding those right hashtags and uh, those communities within Instagram, which, you know, they, they might not pop up straight away, but you'll, you'll find them if you're engaging in the, in the content that uh, is, is right for your business. Uh, and talking about systemizing, I mean, this is almost the, the main topic of uh, what I wanted to cover today was, okay, you're doing a full-time job. You're now also, you know, spending one to two hours a day on Instagram. How do you systemize that? Do you want to walk us through your process? Yeah. So um, first, a caveat, which is that my system changes, um, I would say, all the time. Um, I have been slowly working towards a system though that is sticking over the last year and um, I actually think I'm nearly, I'm nearly there. Um, so basically what I do is I, you know, I work from home so that does make it a little bit easier for me to um, run my time the way I want it to but I actually believe that the system I use is one that could be used by anyone even if you have a nine to five so in this sort of advanced Instagram age where Instagram has definitely exited its infancy we all know about it many of us know how to use it it's no longer necessary to feel like you are having to snap and post in the moment. And that is something that was definitely there in the beginning. And if you were taking pictures earlier and then posting them, you had to tag them later, Graham. But with the move towards many, many very curated feeds, and especially with the move towards using Instagram for business, that is no longer necessary. And so I capitalize on that freely by taking all of my pictures in batches. 